this yet? I'm going to skip over the minutes for now because I don't see Marilyn signed in yet. Um, so let's uh, go to the next item on the agenda after the outstanding minutes. It also is a suspenseful item. There is no final announcement concerning the Georgia Lair Summer Scholar. And that's because there is no final announcement concerning the uh, um, Summer of Science program and which courses will be offered. Uh, because that's a thing for middle school children, they were going more by the governor's um, notion of what was possible than by the community colleges continuing online courses because I don't really see how this middle school thing would work online while they have kids who are kind of sick to death of doing everything Has online. Um, started us yet? S what, Susan? Okay, can't, can't tell the question there. Um, anyway, uh, so the, um, the announcement is that they expect to decide next week over whether it will happen because they're expecting um, um, a new set of uh, released activities to be announced by the governor on, on Saturday. So Regina has, you know, candidates who would be good and we'll just wait to see if the program itself actually happens. Madam Secretary, I see that you're with us. Um, yes. We just skipped over the minutes, but we are delighted to return to them. I was just explaining that we don't yet know the fate of the Summer of Science program for our Georgia Lair Fellow. So the floor is yours, Madam Secretary. Um, I just sent out the um, recent changes that Susan asked me to make. I don't know if everybody just got them. Um, I did, yep, they look good. Yes, I did. I'm going to ask if people could respond sooner because doing the changes at the last minute on the fly mean we have a million copies and it leaves um, a question as to whether or not people have the correct version. Okay, I think that's a good thought. Does anybody have any um, amendments to the minutes as they have them before them? No. No, no. Anybody have any motions in absence of amendments? No. Well, a motion would be nice. A motion to accept. I'll move it. <laughs> okay, I think we're we... all asleep at the switch here. <laughs> okay, so we do we have a second? I'll make a, a second. second. I'll second. Okay, and for Marilyn, who made the original motion? I did. Steve. Okay, good. Good, good. Well, yeah. Okay, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're good. Um, next is the uh, Cape. Oh, go ahead. Before you leave, the, uh, just one question on that fellowship. How much does that cost and how is it funded? Um, funded by donations from energy committee members. And um, if it goes, it costs $295. Huh. This is the first time there's ever been a question of it, it happening. So I'm, I'm really startled by that. Okay, so um, the Cape Light Compact update, um, we have some things going on with um, DPU hearings. Our next board meeting is uh, a week from tomorrow. That's on the 10th of June. It, of course, is also going to be a Zoom meeting, but the if you want to attend that, you can click on a Zoom link on the Cape Light Compact website on next Wednesday. Um, we'll be finishing up a, a few things, and we also are going to be uh, looking forward to resuming non-virtual energy audits. Remember, they were so puzzling. How how were they going to happen? Well, soon people will be able to go to your house and um, and do energy audits again, and that's a good thing because that's going to be um, 
nice to have done in advance of when we actually go active with the uh, implementation of Solarize. Any have any anybody have any questions about the compact? Its works, its pumps. Did um, you mention DPU hearing? Um, what was the subject for that? Um, continuing on the question of. Um, uh, and you don't necessarily need this for the minutes, but um, on the energy efficiency side, um, what is the prorated costs um, cost portion for energy efficiency activities as opposed to power supply activities? Um, what the compact has had to do as um, its own municipal entity is to prorate things like um, um, administrative salaries, rent, utilities, um, IT rental and service, that kind of thing by, it's almost like a law firm with people keeping track, you know, by the portion of the hour, whether they're working on energy efficiency, which is the enormous 50 million part of the budget, or whether they're working on power supply, which is, you know, usually a little below or a little above 1 million, because those two things have to be kept absolutely separate for DPU. Thank you. Okay, and if there aren't any questions then, let's go to Steve and find out what CVEC is up to. Okay, um, there's uh, basically uh, four items that I was going to talk about. Uh, one is uh, parcel E. That's the uh, parcel by the uh, transfer station that uh, is being proposed or has been proposed and we have bids to install photovoltaics at that location. There was a, a question of uh, setbacks. Uh, there were some uh, setbacks defined back in 1987 when that facility was uh, first being uh, developed. Uh, we proposed, uh, or CVEC proposed to uh, reduce the uh, setback requirement in order to enable the installation of the uh, photovoltaic uh, installation. Uh, the Board of Health had to uh, weigh in on that because they had put in the original restriction. So the Board of Health met uh, last week, I believe it was, uh, Rich Bienvenu, uh, with uh, significant input from uh, Liz Argo, uh, the uh, Board of Health uh, unanimously accepted the revised setback. So that's great news. Uh, that, that is project, good. Yeah, that project will uh, move forward. So uh, the uh, Senior Center, uh, we uh, had we've sent out all the uh, all the material has been uh, developed for that uh, Jeff uh, town approval uh, final approval is required and uh, Jeff Colby will be the person who uh, shepherds that through the town oh okay okay uh, the uh, BES the uh, which is the uh, battery uh, uh, backup system at the uh, high school uh -huh. uh, that has been moving uh, forward nicely, except for one item. Uh, the uh, state uh, supply uh, income that uh, or state grant had a, a th three year window. <laughs> and uh, oh, that, no. that window ran out uh, about two months ago. Liz Argo has been uh, pursuing that. She's talked to the people at the uh, state level. They want it you know, they want to uh, extend that. Oh, good. And, uh, so that should not be a problem. But uh, a lot of the, uh, unfortunately, some of the Eversource uh, heel dragging, uh, you know, they just push the, uh, uh, push that uh, effort way, way out. I'm sure Eversource didn't mean to, Steve. <laughs> I'm sure they did. <laughs> The, uh, and then the final thing I was going to uh, bring up is uh, CVEC uh, will have a new uh, uh, executive director. Okay, a decision has been made uh, to uh, hire uh, Maria Marasco. 
which is a name that may uh, ring a bell with some people. Uh, her uh, brother, for example, is a, a doctor here in uh, in Yarmouth, and uh, I know Anne Marie has gone to him. But uh, Maria, uh, she lives in South Yarmouth, and Yay. she uh, yes, uh, and she's been a member of the community. I guess born here, the family is here, and. Uh, so she has very, very close ties to the uh, community. Uh, she's a lawyer. So uh, Barry <laughs> would appreciate that. Uh, she uh, has worked at the uh, state level and worked as uh, a uh, you know, consultant, if you will, on her own uh, uh, over the years. Uh, most recently, she was in Fall River and uh, was involved with the uh, wind uh, effort in Fall River where they uh, were looking to have uh, the, uh, the wind uh, uh, cabling come to uh, come across from the uh, vineyard. Uh, she knows, uh, I guess, Dan Knappick. She's uh, worked with him over the years, have been in, uh, involved with him. Uh, let's see, she was the... Uh, Southeast, uh, I have a resume here, but I'll just read a couple of titles off to you. Southeast Regional Director for the Massachusetts Office of Business Development and in both Barnstable and Fall River. So she does have a wider uh, Cape uh, contact. Uh, she uh, has been involved in finance at the state level. Uh, she was the Executive Director of the Massachusetts App uh, Appellate tax board. Uh, she was involved with the pension reserve system. Uh, she, uh, so she's been involved with the Department of Transportation. So, you know, very, very uh, uh, strong resume. So she will but, but, start uh, uh, July 1st. Uh, Liz will uh, Liz will hold that title for uh, about the uh, executive director uh, position for about six months. And then she will uh, turn over to uh, Maria. Ah, oh, okay. okay. Um, so you spell I'll just spell Maria's last name. It's M-A-R-A-S-C-O, Marasco. I'm sorry, M? M-A-R-A-S-C-O. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, and I just mentioned her education. Uh, she went to uh, Suffolk University Law School, uh, BU Graduate School of uh, management, management, and then uh, uh, that was her MBA, and then the BA was from uh, Simmons. But the question is, has she climbed on roofs and nailed PV panels <laughs> to them? <laughs> She, she, if she hasn't, she'd probably be willing to do it. She's uh, that kind of person. Is that a full-time paid position? Yes, it's a full-time position. So she'll be giving up all her other lawyering duties, or is she going to be spread? Well, there? she'll she'll use those skills, you know, at uh, uh, at CVEC. Uh, she they also there's a family-owned business that uh, she's the uh, president of uh, here in Yarmouth. So uh, I'm sure in her off hours, she'll uh, continue to uh, uh, work in that capacity. Steve, what is the family owned business? It's a, uh, a wine and liquor store. Okay, so so it's not in any way in conflict with the mission of CVEC, <laughs> okay. Well, I, yeah, it shouldn't be. I can, uh, uh, what is it? She's uh, it's it's right. To, it's not Yarmouth. Uh, it might be Yarmouth Wine and uh, Liquors up by uh, you know by by the uh, oh, by the Station Ave Stop uh, and Shop. The, that, yeah, Station, yeah. Station Ave. Uh, yeah, Stop and Shop. Oh, okay. Okay, so I guess we could look for discounts, maybe. <laughs> Any of you have any questions for Steve on what CVEC has been doing? 
we really look forward to that battery storage. Yes. That's a long so fight. That, uh, you know, Liz is pushing very, very hard, has and, and uh, continues to. Yeah, we've really got to get it before Liz is totally gone, right? Yeah. So we could have a big celebration of Liz's retirement and the battery being up for the whole emergency yeah. shelter. Throwing the switch on the battery. Yes. And okay. The, oh, by the way, uh, there is a uh, uh, an uh, Cape Light Compact uh, will be involved to some extent once the battery is up and operating in terms of uh, controlling the uh, battery usage uh, insofar as the uh, uh, the grid is concerned. Uh, oh, okay. There are, there are various benefits that are available to you uh, when uh, there's a call out for, uh, let's say, reducing the uh, load on the uh, on the uh, uh, you know on the basically on the grid and uh, supplementing it with uh, local battery storage. So uh, that occurs from what we've been told maybe four to six times a year. Mm. Mm. And there's, uh, there's payments uh, associated with that. And I, as far as I know, the uh, payments will be shared with uh, Cape Light Compact. They will do the management of that. The, uh, the battery, uh, uh, that money will flow into CVEC and then over to the school district. Oh, okay. That will be complicated bookkeeping to keep. It's a good thing you have a new person coming in who has an MBA and a legal <laughs> degree. <laughs> okay, well, let's yeah, move. That's it. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that's it. Okay, well, thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, if there are no further questions or comments for Steve, we can move on to our next item which we will be dismissing fairly quickly, I think. Um, update on town energy progress, town staff member, if available. Um, and while we have a very gracious town staff member, hello, Tom, um, hosting us here, we don't have anyone reporting on energy. Um, we're not sure who our next town staff liaison will be. Um, Dan Napit continues as town administrator, but Rich Bianvenu finished as of uh, midnight Sunday. He had given um, notice two months ago, so he is free at last from our tentacles and uh, will be doing other things. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what will happen, but I think what we do is hold on tight to Dan until someone gets appointed and use our lack of an appointee as, as a sort of direct access. Um, I didn't want to bother Dan about that today. I, I um, got in touch with two different people at Town Hall um, about annual town meeting and what was going to happen with that so that we'd, we'd have the news for you if that was on tonight. They're still deciding. Um, Phil Gaudet says he expects that they'll decide tonight. Um, it's still a go, the limited town meeting for the 22nd, but um, it's a question of whether it's outdoors, and of course we've just heard it's going to be an active hurricane season, um, whether it will be social spacing using the gym as well as the cafetorium um, at Mattakees. Or actually, I guess that's a straight auditorium, isn't it, Sandy? think so. Uh, and, and then the other possibility is online. I don't think they're going to do it at Mattakees. What I have right now is at DY. Oh, okay. Oh, so that would be a I much bigger. Gyms, and I have them in the auditorium. I have them in the upper gym, the lower gym, the auditorium, and the cafeterias. Wow. Okay. So uh, anyway, Phil Gaudet said of, that uh, it's... um. It's an agenda. If you look on the selectmen's agenda for tonight, the COVID-19 points of which there are eight or nine, if you look and you'll see the last two um, and it looks like it'll be decided tonight as part of that. Um, but uh, it's sounding indoors-ish and it's also sounding live, which seems really only fair to people who might not have computers or might not have Zoom access or might not even feel comfortable trying. 
So Sandy, that's that's encouraging news. Uh, Joyce, yep. I might mention in a, a recent uh, email about a week ago uh, from uh, Rich, he did say that uh, uh, Jeff Colby uh, will be taking over uh, insofar as the uh, uh, liaison, town liaison to the Energy Committee. Oh, see, I thought that was perhaps a temporary thing, but that's that's going to be you think our permanent link to town hall? Well, uh, in, in the case of uh, specifically uh, shepherding uh, the uh, senior center uh, PV uh, system through, yeah. through the town, Jeff is gonna take care of that. But yeah, I'm I, thinking I more of things more like- I feel from the uh, email that Jeff was a little, gonna be a little more permanent, but we'll see. Oh, okay. Because I remember when Jeff was first appointed, um, I believe that the reason he wasn't assigned energy committee was that it was felt he was too busy and that resulted in our Roby period. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Um, I, I confess I was rather more interested um, in uh, who might be of help with Solarize. I mean, it makes sense to have Jeff um be of help with an actual town facility like the pv and any improvements on the senior center but um i think we might need somebody in town hall proper to be of assistance by solarize but we won't be really going into the active phase on that for a couple months so we've got some breathing room isn't, isn't rich uh, the, the official representative uh to the to the state uh, on the solarize uh, I, I, that doesn't Actually, have to change does it well he was in touch with them but when we put in the um the final project proposal the signature on it was dan's oh okay well Tom, yeah you. but i think yeah. rich was identified as the municipal representative yes so we will we will have to uh I mean, given how busy Dan is, we're going to need another person appended there. Um, and preferably somebody in the same building as Dan so that things can be passed easily. Hmm. So Tara Monroe is going to be on the call um, when she can get on tonight. But yep. um, she was on the original, she and Rich, she was originally very interested. I wonder if that's a possibility. Oh. Well, she would be great if she had the time. I know she's, you know, going to school as as well as working, but I mean, she's I really know. good. Okay, um, so the next um, um, update is an update on the Yarmouth Solarize Plus preparation, um, and um, also one additional thought on heat pumps and filtration. Um, I took and Sandy did as well, um, a two part um, UMass um, uh, webinar on heat pumps that Sandy located. And I, one, I was in on it also. And you were too, Bob. Okay, great, great. So all of us non-engineers did it, huh? Well, um, <laughs> but but here's the thing, I because I'm not an engineer, I can't evaluate this, but um, in the question and answer, um, there was one person who brought up whether he, and further argument for heat pumps in this weird time we find ourselves in would be um, making it easier to do filtration of contaminated air to try to reduce the COVID virus spread. Um, nothing so sealed as you do with a hospital room where you kind of have to have the the ventilators not go to the rest of the building and all that but whether whether it just generally would be helpful in terms of purifying the air i mean i look at our backyard and i see mainly chipmunks i don't know if they're carriers but still for intake of air i thought that was an interesting um um question that someone had i didn't feel that the engineers presenting actually answered it and so i was planning on running it by our engineers right here gee we have a couple don't we steve mike yes i was uh 
I attended the second one. I missed oh, the see, you heard it too then probably. Mm -hmm. You must have heard this question answer too then. Uh, did it come up on the second day or the first day? I, oh, I, I think, it, I think oh. it was the first day, yeah. But, um, let me just say that I don't, I don't think it would really work. I mean, uh, a, uh, a whole house central air conditioning system would be a lot better at filtrating your air than uh, one of these uh, mini split systems would be. That's for sure. All it has is a little uh, little filter on it that uh, kind of like a screen that uh, you have to take off and uh, vacuum the dust off it every now and then. And most people don't even do that. So uh, I, don't, I don't think it would work. Well, they, um, train has just come out not that I'm an engineer, everybody, but Train has just come out um, with a new light in, um, I, I, I don't exactly know, I'm getting the research on it right now, that is actually like some type of a, uh, a laser type of light that goes on the filters and is filtering them. So you just stick them in the units and it's supposed to work that way. Um, they are doing it in the bigger rooftops, not so much in the splits but they also have that technology. So there are new things that are being invented um, per the COVID. So stay tuned, anything could happen too. And I, I would agree with uh, Mike, I, I, his comments on uh, uh, heat pumps, uh, uh, I think are, are accurate. And Sandy, that's you know interesting that uh, uh, this new technology is available. So. If, if you can uh, get any information, you know, specific information on that, I'd appreciate it. I guess we'd all appreciate it. I will definitely yes, keep you all great. Did uh, any of you that sat in on both sessions get your copy so that they were going to send out the uh, slides? I haven't yeah. received them yet. I haven't received them either. Yeah, I, I will tell you that. Um, oh, they they were the I wish that Bob, you. Who was on the first day, Bob and Joyce? And, and, and I Sandy. was. Was the first day more interesting from our perspective than the second? Yes, I, I, the, the, the second day, as far as I was concerned, was pretty much useless. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. And I liked the second day because I've already had the bot training on the first day, but um, the second day was more useful to me to see how it could be implemented and what we're gonna do with Solar Plus. But I don't know, I guess, hmm days were good. It certainly was interesting to hear how different types of heat pumps might work in different environments. I mean, it would give us, I mean, not the wherewithal to decide or design anybody's heat pump system, but it, it, it gave me more of a sense of the, all the different factors that apply when you've got, uh, when you've got um, a person who wants a heat pump but has, you know, different quirky conditions for their house, and there's there's a lot of that on the Cape. Okay, well, anything else about heat pumps, and then I'll turn it over to Mike Duffy for an update on Solarize generally. Nope, nobody cares about heat pumps now because it's summer, huh? Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I mean, I've got a heat pump, but I've only put it on once so far. <laughs> it hasn't been very hot lately. Yeah, well, my heat went on automatically this morning. Yeah, well, fortunately, I turned mine off completely so it wouldn't come on. But it's a little cool in the morning. Okay, so we had our, uh, what has now become a monthly conference call with the uh, CEC folks last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And I'll just run through a couple of things that were sort of uh, decided and agreed upon. Uh, one, a couple of them have to do with Sandra. Sandra will set up a generic email for us uh, and maybe a phone number connected to it. Uh, right, Sandra, you had agreed to that last week? I did. I did. I, I did a little bit of work on my projects this weekend, but it needs a lot of lot more. And the uh, young lady from that committee said that she would help me out too. So that was very thoughtful of her. I'm, 
Oh, Victoria? I, I have no idea, but do you have any an estimate for how long that would take to put in place? Are Sandy, give me a couple of weeks, please. Oh, I, I mean, I'll give you plenty of time. I just was kind of... I actually started what? working on it, um, trying to set up the site and trying to get the links and the resources. And I need to do some research on how we really want to do, I want to look at some of the other sites to see how they do their email and their phones before I jump into something. Because the technology out there is quite, um, it's changing. Um, so I, I don't want to jump into something. I can do a temporary email, but um, I'd rather wait and see what we have. Okay, that's fine. Sandy, if you want to assign me any specific tasks, I. I'm willing to help. Uh, also, you've got on your plate, Sandra, the, uh, to work with that other lady on the uh, web page. Yes, she, Victoria, she's the one that's going to help me out with some things. So I wanted to get a layout type. I've been sketching it out like a drawing on a piece of paper and then trying to get my sites. I'm not sure if I wanted to go sideways, up and down. I don't like the new web sites that go up and down, but she has a little more knowledge on HTML um, programming, so it might work out for us on that. That's Victoria from CEC. Correct. And what about, then you have to coordinate with another lady down here in Yarmouth, right? Oh, Angela. Angela, Angela the, the town's consultant. Before we put it on to the, if we're going to do the town website, she hasn't real, whatever I do, she has to upload it. However, she's given me permission to do the posting and agenda. She said that I've done everything okay. So she might be all right with me doing it, but we'll have to play that by ear. Okay. The fact that Rich is no longer with us won't impact that at all. It should hmm. not, because I think Angela is probably the reason the re the reason why Angela is in there is probably because they knew that Rich was going. So she's taken up the slack, but I'll work with her. If she needs to put it up, I'll give her the template and she can load it. And that's the other thing with the Taniyama website, the, um, the capabilities of doing some of the um, photos or anything that we want to do with galleries is limited. So we might be better to go outside and just put a link on, on our website. So I'm weighing that both ways. And then the final thing that uh, came up with your name on it is the logo. And I know you had mentioned that a possibility of getting some of the students from the school to work on the logo. Um, does that have to wait until school comes back, whenever that may be? Yes, unfortunately, because there are no students or no teachers here. I, I, am, I was going to reach out to Tamara, but I'm not doing it right now because I know that it will get lost um, because she's setting up for graduation. Uh -huh. So um, I plan on touching base with her as soon as she's finished with those plans. Okay. Um, another thing, Joyce, uh, Lisa Collecting from, addresses. No, Lisa's from CEC said that that check was in the mail for the $2,500. Did you ever find out who actually received it? No, I've been um, ducking bothering Dan until after tonight's Board of Selectmen. Um, but I do figure that it's, it's safely deposited somewhere in the town coffers. Okay. You'll, I guess, after the meeting tonight maybe pursue that so we know yeah. where Fig it is. Fig figure out figure i'll touch base with him tomorrow um also on another thing that i was supposed to find out for lisa um we'll know better you know when we see next week how much more staff is allowed back into town hall but as somebody who's um living in a house that was supposed to be recited the last week in april um, in spite of permits being online, we discovered a real delay with uh, the permitting thing that um, it came in and it was filled out and it sat for weeks. Then somebody noticed um, that it, 
it was the fee that the contractor paid was $15 less than they should have because the rates had gone up. So um, I had been checking just because I was, I lived near town hall and it just seemed easier for me to check. And there was this $15 thing. So I ran a check over and deposited it in the blue box that's outside the side door of town hall, which is for all paper communications right now. But even then it seemed to take a while for things to progress from um, Mark Grill's office manager um, to the, uh, to Sears, who was the person who was actually in charge of things like siding project and their inspections. So um, I guess I'm thinking it's, it's actually quite good that we're not trying to do installations and things this summer because they've got a huge backlog and until they get their full department back in um, the building commissioner's office, I picture that missed connections like that are going to happen a lot. So our, um, our, our permit arrived last Saturday, but it was first applied for April 21st. Hmm. Can I, can I say in, in defense to Mark's office that they have been charged with getting all the setups for restaurants, for the school, for the town meeting. Um, oh, oh. The safety plan along with the health department. So all these new openings, the building department is charged with making sure that things are right per the building codes, et cetera. Oh. So they're, they're I think most of the inspectors are there. I don't know about the girls because I called over there today and they didn't answer, but I do know that the rest of the team has been out straight. They don't even know if they're coming or going. Well, Cindy, that's a big help. Thank you. Cause I think that's the kind of work that is invisible to me and that I really appreciate once I know they're doing it. Welcome Tara. Tara's email indicated that she had lent someone her Hello. microphone set. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. You got okay. your set back. I, I borrowed a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got Let it. me know if you need me to talk. Okay. My husband's out mowing and trimming, and I, I so I mute myself. You all don't need to hear a lawnmower running in the background. I do. It <laughs> makes me feel good, but it's not good for the meeting. <laughs> Right. And we, we already finished the town update, but we didn't get much of one. So I wonder, Joyce, if we have any town updates from Tira. No. Oh, not her area at all. Uh, continuing then through the solarized couple of last points. Uh, one, those people who are not involved in the call, uh, Barry's uh, graciously assembled real actual operating data for his uh, PV system and um, I guess he has sort of volunteered I think to be kind of the host of uh, PV once we get this thing up and running and any rate he'll have good actual data to show from a real live Yarmouthite user. So thank you to Barry for that. And the uh, I have the uh, assignment to do basically do the same for the uh, air source heat pumps. I have two Mitsubishi systems and uh, Mitsubishi seems to be, if you listen to the people I think last week or whenever that ASHP training was, they seem to be keen on Mitsubishi. So, hmm. um, Last thing I wanted to mention with regard to Solarize was, as you know, I put together this uh, first detailed list of tasks, I think five tasks for us to uh, pursue. The first one is uh, formalizing roles, responsibilities, and timelines, which I've taken the lead on. The next one is develop extensive email lists for contacting potential customers, which Joyce has the lead on, and both Chris and Bob have agreed to support her on that. Um, the next one is the prepare website and content on Google website, which we talked about. Sandra has the lead and uh, Sandra, Chris and Bob have both volunteered to help you on that. So Bob re-upped again today, I heard him say, but uh, Chris as well. Perfect. Uh, 
next one is to develop outreach materials for potential customers. Um, I took the lead on that with Chris and Bob offering to support. And then there's develop training materials for the volunteers. Uh, so far, I'm on the, the lead on that. But if anybody else would like to step up, they're welcome to it. Um, most of these tasks are put through to, uh, to really get done in the month of June and July, at least uh, a good head start on them. So that's kind of the timing. I'll probably, over the next couple of weeks, send out little reminders or give people a little jingle to see how they're doing on their individual tasks. And when I do that, they can query me as to how I'm doing on mine. So uh, that's it for Solarize for now. Okay, any questions for Mike on Solarize? Okay, I guess we think it's well led. Um, we noticed that you're here and Steve K isn't. I hope Paul is well with his household. And we will wait to see him in the future. Uh, okay, now we switch to, um, again, um, discussion led by, by Mike, the five-year plan and energy committee goal setting. Um, it looks like we finally um, have a version, I think, that will make everyone happy, which, you know, talks about our vision and then gives us specific goals in line with that vision. Um, it's making us put our money where our mouth is, but it's also making sure that we're not overestimating the size of our, our, our money or our resources to match our mouth. Actually, Joyce, it does not establish any goals for us for next year. Just lays out a number of tasks that we should embark on and uh, see what we can accomplish. With at the end side, of course, is those first uh, three goals that I had uh, included in that five-year plan that uh, I sent out several months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as we've mentioned at a number of the uh, the meetings and. Uh, Susan was so nice to go and uh, do a nice detailed comparison of uh, what's actually on the uh, website with from the uh, Energy Committee and tied to the Board of Selectmen, that, um, and which I wholeheartedly agree with that our role is advisory. But in addition to be having an advisory role, I think we can carve off another little piece that says we're going to educate and motivate the people within Yarmouth to try to uh, to inspire them to try to achieve some of those that level of goals, but uh, uh, nobody, I don't think anybody can actually at the end of the year or the end of five years say, "Hey, you Energy Committee, you said you were going to do this and you didn't accomplish it." That's uh, that's that wasn't really the purpose of what those goals were were to be all about. Not uh, not with the fact that we do not have the uh, authority to really do much of anything. So everything we do is uh, just on a pro bono basis here and um, <laughs> try to get done what we can do, that's all. So I laid out a half a dozen tasks there um, in sort of a three phase approach. First one is basically to uh, establish what's the uh, energy usage, usage right now throughout the town in terms of uh, commercial building schools, residential buildings, but also vehicles, something we have not, I don't think looked at much in the past. Um, and then uh, take another, I guess, four tasks and uh, develop outreach materials that will help us put together an educational and motivation campaign uh, for energy conservation, energy efficiency, renewable energy, and electric and hybrid vehicles. And then the last task would then be actually to take, take those materials as they start getting developed. Uh, these are not done sequentially. They get lots of overlap on these tasks, but um, actually uh, start the outreach program, which should match in very well with our Solarize program. We should get pretty good at being able to do this. So that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it, what it is, and I guess I'd just be interested to see if, uh, if it's something that the other energy committee members are willing to sign up for the energy committee 
to actually go public and say, these are the things we're going to try to do during fiscal year 2021, which I assume starts July 1, correct? Yes. Oh, wait. Yes. Don't everybody speak up at once. Oh, you want some comments. Um, <clears throat> well, let me get started here. The, this line six of your first uh, paragraph, you use the term relegated. Uh, I think that's a little bit on the negative side. Is there something a little bit more positive that we could? Uh, Line six. Although okay. the committee is relegated to an advisory role, um, it may be, it may be true, but it 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 sort of implies that we're sort of pushed off to the side, uh, which is exactly the opposite of what we we the purpose of the this whole document, I think. Uh, oh, okay, I defer to Joyce, the English major, to pick a <laughs> better word there. Okay. Well, I'd first point out that the passive structure reduces the committee's agency right there. <laughs> so we might want to rethink the verb and the order of the sentence. But let's hold that and move on to further questions. And I'll scribble here on the side. Yeah, I mean, that's, that was just, that comment was more a question of style uh, and, and not substance to the, the, the task at hand. This, the second reaction was, why did you separate tasks two, three, four, and five? They, they all seem to be the same thing, but just different areas. Uh, would it be simpler to just have 2A, 2B, 2C, et cetera? Well, um, certainly uh, the federal government generally distinguishes much. I mean, it, uh, at the office at the Department of Energy is, uh, what is it? Uh, and it Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. So there's a big break right there. And within the, uh, and, and they actually have a separate uh, department altogether for vehicles. So um, I, and I wanted to make that distinction between conservation and energy efficiency. Conservation being more a behavioral uh, condition for people and energy efficiency may be requiring uh, an, an investment in new technology. So. That's why I wanted to make that break okay. between those two. And I think uh, vehicles uh, are totally different animal as far as I'm concerned from, uh, mm -hmm. from buildings. So uh, also make is a lot more difficult for what we can actually do there because being kind of a tourist area, there's lots of people are gonna come into town and we don't have any influence naturally over what they're driving when they come into town. So. We should just put toll booths on Route 6. <laughs> You've got an electric car you go through. Signs, no gasoline allowed in this town. <laughs> exactly. Mike, I had a question on the, the vehicle um, plan, which isn't really a question about the plan, but do you have any sense or any data on how many zero emissions vehicles there might be in Yarmouth at the moment? I, I see the occasional electric car and mainly hybrids? I have, I have no idea because uh, that's part of what that task is all about is to go find out. Well, task one would be to go find out what that is. I don't know. If, uh, Barry, you have, uh, is yours an all electric or hybrid? All electric? It's an all electric. Uh, when you register that, is there any box to check off when you register the car that it's all electric? Well, I mean, you, the state issues EV plates, which I got, but it doesn't require that an EV bear an EV plate. That was just an option. It doesn't cost anything, but um, I don't know offhand. I'll try to figure out whether there's some way in which the state would, I assume they'd have records of, of what models are registered in what towns and the, um, so three zip codes in Yarmouth. 
Yeah. So, so that we may be, I mean, there may be a way to find that out. I just don't know offhand. So if we have somebody that wants to volunteer for that particular task, uh, some part of that particular task one, they could uh, take the ball and run with it. <laughs> That, I mean, that's the other thing here. I mean, I laid out this half a dozen tasks, but I'm not going to do these all by myself. I'm going to have <laughs> people going to have to step up to the bar here and say that uh, they, they're willing to support this and they're going to do with it, help with it. Otherwise, we'll just drop it. Hmm. Pregnant silence here. <laughs> I could say I think that's a really good idea that we don't put we don't keep anything on the list that doesn't have somebody's name on it because um, then for sure and you know a year from now we'll look back and go yep we didn't do that yep we didn't do that so um, that's one comment I would have is that everything comes off the list until it's got a lead at least on it and one other comment Mike this is really good um, but I wonder if we change it instead of those three goal vision statements, I wonder if we just call them aspirational statements or something because I just am so used to goals are something I have to have time, energy, and skills for. And, um, and a vision has to be something that we're trying to achieve, like we're trying to achieve it. But, you know, the state's got these, these um, measures that we're working on. So we could also just look up the state measures and just say, here's the state measures that we're trying to do our part to get there. Um, or it could be as simple as just keeping these three, but calling them something other than goals and vision. That's, that's fine. I agree with that. Call them a wish list, whatever. I don't care. But I think obviously I'll drop the, the word goal from it, that's for sure. Steve, any thoughts? Uh, not at the moment. Well, uh, maybe one thought uh, when you were talking about uh, assignments of people to particular tasks. Uh, having had this conversation now, maybe at the next meeting we could, uh, you know, someone may say, gee, I, you know, I found a link. I found, you know, some way of uh, assembling information. Uh, you know, we might uh, do that over the next period of time. Let me just kind of kick it off by saying uh, several years ago when we were starting to talk about green communities, you know, I got on the MEI database and was able to uh, track down all, a lot of the energy usage within the town. Uh, so I would certainly uh, continue to do that part of it. But uh, if somebody wanted to pick up the vehicle and of uh, task one, that would be good. I'll see what I can find. Thank you, Barry. I'll see what I can find out about uh, how to figure out EV registrations. I mean, I mean, it occurs to me the town, because of the excise tax, actually knows what vehicles are registered in town, but probably don't want to put that burden on the town this month. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> But Dan, at some point, you know, that's actually a database that exists. Right? Um, yeah, so maybe I'll take a look at it. There. If I can okay. come up with anything on an internet search. I'll, I'll do likewise. So, okay. Tara, where, do, uh, See, where do hybrids has, fit in this? Is frozen? Transitional? Where do hybrids fit? Yeah, because I went from a a gas guzzler at at twenty miles to to the gallon to a uh, a hybrid where I'm getting around forty forty five miles to the gallon. In other words, I've cut my on that car. I've cut my my fuel utilization in half, approximately a little bit more even. I mean, where does that sort of count in the in this grand scheme of things. Well, if you notice that task identifies electric and uh, hybrid electric vehicles, so we'd be counting that for sure. Yeah, and okay. I don't maybe, know, I maybe, forget whether, 
maybe even a rough number would be to uh, visit a dealer and explain what we're doing and try to get a feel for how many uh, vehicles they sell of a particular type. But all we'd be interested in are those that are coming to the town of Yarmouth. So. <laughs> Where'd you buy your car, Bob? Uh, from a guy on the street. Uh, it was a used car. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Where'd you buy yours? Um, from Belize Hyundai, which I think at that moment was still in Yarmouth and now is in Hyannis. We got ours in Cambridge, so we'll get our next one here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we bought our Prius uh, over in, uh, in uh, Hyannis. Yeah, well, uh, mine was used. Uh, it already already had 250,000 miles on it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but it's been a good car, that's for sure. Uh, the uh, interesting thing about Teslas is that you, uh, you know, they don't have dealerships. They, uh, uh, per, as uh, per se, uh, you contact them uh, remotely and uh, they sell you the car. And I know if, a friend of ours bought one recently, and uh, uh, it was off Cape where he bought it, where where he ordered it. And I believe they uh, they actually drove the car out here and uh, made an exchange uh, with him uh, for the car. Can you just explain to me exactly what it is you're looking for? Barry, you had mentioned that when you registered your electric vehicle, you got a separate um, license plate that differentiates between an electric vehicle and a regular vehicle. So what is the difference in the registration? Does it, does it begin EV on the registration? What, what makes it a unique registration? Yeah. How does it differentiate between, you know, my registration? I have a Toyota Camry, and your registration with an e, with an energy v, an energy or EV electric vehicle. So the plate actually physically says EV, E over V so, uh, as the first letters of the plate. Okay. The so so it's like a Cape and Islands uh, plate, uh, or well, a Red Sox plate, or, or just a less decorative. So it just an indication uh, in the registration number. So the registration actually is EV and the numbers. And that's how it begins, EV numbers. Yeah. And do you know if they all begin that way? No. That is, if, okay. if, you, if you get an EV and you want an EV plate, you can get one. But I know, look, for example, my dealer said um, they would just throw a plate on it that they had around, but to get the EV plate, they had to go to the registry to get it. Um, so they, the EV they, they was a specific it. request that the yes. the buyer put in. Okay, yes. because we can. All right, so I I can very easily run a report, but it would be on a specific plate type. So that plate type, if the people chose to have an EV plate, I it, it's simple. I mean, I can have a report run in in sixty seconds, and probably send it out to everybody. Um, but if people aren't requesting, that's right. something I, I, I'm not sure. I don't think it would be a particularly meaningful number. Um, I, don't, I don't know how long the state's been doing it, and I don't have any sense of what percentage of buyers are wearing that on their car. And I doubt, I don't, we do know want to, okay. I don't think it applies right. to hybrids, for example, which are still, I'm sure, around in larger right. numbers than all electrics. So okay. I, I, we need to figure out a, a better data source for this. Okay, well, the assessor's data, we actually were connected. We, we access and utilize their website um, for business purposes, for excise tax, daily, weekly. Um, it, it is tough right now. It's extremely challenging unless it's a top priority to actually get a person to, to work with. But it is possible. I can certainly reach out and and at least pose the question um what you know how are you tracking these if if the buyers if the register 
if they choose to register their vehicle with the EV plate versus those that don't, is, is that EV plate, or I'm sorry, EV, the vehicle itself, listed in as, as a specific you know, electric vehicle? I mean, and certainly I'm happy to pose the question and, and see if what kind of a response I get and I'll send it out to you all. Um, but the only other way I could uh, track, you know, um, I don't want to say adequately, uh, just uh, track the, the, the EV plates would be, you know, the EV vehicles, I'm sorry, would be through the EV plates. So, but it's certainly, I, I can certainly ask them. It's, it's, it's not going to hurt anything to question. So Tara, if the town decided to encourage uh, the, the purchase of EVs, the town could say you don't have to pay excise tax on your EVs. I don't um, see that. Excuse me? I, I don't see that happening because the excise tax, even though towns issue the excise tax, that would be, have to be something that came from the state. It's excise tax is, is it's, it's something that the state basically issues they basically send us a file. We have to bill what they send us unless they're exempt for a specific reason. And that exemption would be determined through Mass General Law. The towns, oh, okay. as of right now, the towns so, have no local option to exempt vehicles. Okay. Unless they and fall that's within good the to know. That's good that, Because I was going to seriously propose that, uh, you know, Yarmouth you know, eliminate the excise tax on, on electric, electric. No, and, and it's a, it, yeah, it's a good thought. It's, I mean, I'm certainly, I would be behind you, but it is something that would have yeah. to be, it would have to start at your state level. So you'd have to start with your legislators and it would, it would come down to the town and then be included in, okay, now if it's, if it fits in this category, you can actually go ahead and exempt it. But unless that happens, we have to bill it. Yeah, okay. We, we're not allowed any kind of an incentive there. We don't have, um, we don't have the authority. I'd Sarah, like to... I, I for one would appreciate it if you could uh, at least extract the uh, vehicles in Yarmouth that have an EV license plate. But also I'm wondering okay. if you can go to, if you can get into that database for the tax forms, excise tax forms, and look at the model of the cars. Certainly if it's a Tesla, that's one where we want. I, and I don't know, like what is it, a, the Chevy Bolt? Bolt, Does it actually yeah. go down to that level of model detail on the excise tax statement? I'm not sure. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you could probably get a pretty good head start at least on what's there. You're, Right now, all we've got is four, Steve, Galvin, Taylor, uh, Barry, <laughs> Rob, and Joyce. So that's the only four we've currently got. So I'm sure you can expand that database quite a bit. Okay. I have a further question on that um, for Mike and for Tara. Mike, from your dealings with the Clean Energy Center and their incentives, and Tara, from your sense of how the state government works, does it seem to you that the uh, state would maintain for boasting purposes a list of how many um, emissions-free vehicles there were, even if they had not applied for the incentives? Well, the, this, this thing that's called, what's it called? EV mass something or other. Uh, it's established a goal for the state of so many hundreds of thousands of electric vehicles by such and such a date, which is what I use to uh, estimate that the Yarmouth, in order to do their part based on their best, their population, should uh, shoot for a thousand electric or hybrid electric vehicles by 2025. So, so somehow the state is going to have to count to come up mm. with their whether they've met their goal or not. Right. I'll try to contact somebody at EV Mass and see what that's all about. 
Okay. okay. So I remember with um, some of the um, residential energy incentives, it turned out if people um, hadn't applied, you know, for for state programs or or tax breaks or things like that, some home improvements in the direction of sustainability would just not register. But it seems that maybe the EV thing is shiny and specific enough that somebody would be tracking it. Outside of a ledger of uh, grants. Mike, if you want, I tried a redraft of that sentence. Yeah. If you want to hear it, I sent it to you by text. Um, and this is it. The committees, this is again back to the first paragraph um, of the um, Yarmouth Energy Committee um, st statements that Mike put together for this meeting. It would read the committee's official role in Yarmouth is advisory without the resources and authority to implement to implement change. Um, no, I'm sorry, let me, let me read it from the text because I have more there. Um, the committee's role is advisory without the resources and authority to implement changes, but it does have the ability to educate and motivate and then continue with the rest of your sentence. Sounds fine to me. Bob? Yes, good. You sent that to me, text, right? Yeah. And I'll, if we agree to that at, at the end of this discussion, then I'll make sure that Marilyn gets a copy by email. I have a question on our vision and mission statement. So I came in a little bit late. And I'm not sure if there was a, a question posed or a request for some clarification on the vision statement versus the mission statement and then incorporating goal. Um, the vision statement would actually outline where we want to go, what we want to become, what we want to accomplish, and what is important. That would be the like a vision statement. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, mission. And I, if if I'm giving you information that you you don't know. Forgive me. I just oh, wanted no, to be we, sure. But, but we love to learn new things. Carry on. And then okay, the mission would actually express um, the purpose and the needs that we exist to address uh, the business. What, what are we doing to address these? So the business would be like our, our actions. What exactly is it that we're doing to address this? Um, and then our values, principles, beliefs, um, and, and that's basically what would be guiding the work that we do. Um, if that is helpful at all. Mm -hmm. So when I look at, at goals, or I, I view them as things that we are striving to accomplish. Um, I don't necessarily view the committee or the team as failing if those goals aren't accomplished. There are many reasons why goals can't be accomplished. I mean, funding dries up, uh, so we lose staff, we lose, you know, I mean, there are many reasons, but, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it would still be a goal um, and it could, it could go on the next years. And it, yeah, I don't, I don't see not, not accomplishing the goal as, as a failure. Um, just because there are so many outside factors. Um, so that's kind of how I view them. And I just happened to take a, that, that came up. That was, a, that was actually a big topic in one of my strategic leadership classes um, that, that I just, just finished. And um, so it, 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 kind of, uh, it, it kind of clarified for me what the differences were. So, and, and I didn't realize I didn't know what the differences were. I did, I thought I knew, and I didn't. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there in case that helps at all. It's a helpful, it's a helpful way to look at it. I mean, the kind of idea of what the need is and, and where our values meet the need and, and give us a role. I mean, what you, what you just said helps, I think. Okay, Joyce, do you want me to send that to you in writing? Would that be? Or are you all set? 
Um, you, I don't want to overload you with information no. by any means. We're all so overloaded right now. Well, it's it's um, Mike's proposal. So, so let's okay. see. I mean, we'll be we'll be discussing this further, and let's see where that would fit in as as we get to like a final version of this. Um, Mike, do you have any thoughts on what Tara was saying? Well, just that I that um, I never should have used the word goal where I've used it there because uh, and, and what it really is is when, when I when we talk about uh, for instance the first one there reduce energy compliance consumption within Yarmouth by twenty percent by twenty twenty five um, from our perspective at the Energy Committee that's more like boy it would be nice. If uh, yeah. I just got a note, internet is unstable. Can you still hear me? <laughs> yes. Um, it would, that, that would be nice if the town of Yarmouth could show that they have reduced their energy consumption by 20% by 2025. So I'd, mm -hmm. I'd say that's more of a, that would be a vision that would be nice. Is it up to the energy committee to meet that vision? No. Can we do some things that can point towards, uh, towards perhaps uh, contributing to that vision? Yes, and I think that's what this plan is all about. We're gonna do what we can do to try to inspire the town to, yep. to point in that direction. Okay. And, uh, all right, no, that makes it kind of sense. Right. And I love Susan's wording as well, with the, aspir the aspiration. I, 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 I think that's beautiful, I think it, it, it it's, in, it's, it's, I, it's all good. It's all good. Like I said, not, I didn't throw this information out there to, to confuse anybody. It was just something that I thought might help clarify. That's all. But you can do, take it and do nothing with it, really. I think one of the most important things about what, what, uh, what we're trying to do uh, with this is, is to go beyond the municipal. Uh, the municipality beyond the government, which is where we have concentrated most of our efforts over, uh, well, I mean, that's why the committee was founded, what, uh, it's almost 20 years ago now, uh, or I guess, how old is the CLC, uh, uh, Joyce? Because I think they were started about the same time. <clears throat> oh. CLC goes back to uh, the late 90s, 1997. Okay, because uh, I think that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, most, certainly in the early days when we were here uh, almost entirely, you know, we were working with George to see how we could help the town, you, you know, conserve and become more efficient, uh, et cetera. Uh, I think that this is a big step for us to go out and, and obviously the solarize effort is, is, while it's not officially part of the energy committee, um, is sort of a big step in that direction. I mean, in terms of membership and volunteers on the solarize committee, it's, it's almost simultaneous with the energy committee. Um, so, uh, I, I think that's uh, a very, very, very important part of it. And I don't know whether it, it should we sort of emphasize that a little bit more in, in the in the words that we use. Uh, or, I mean, it, it it it's clear here, but I I mean, it's as if we've been doing all at the at the same rate previously, which we obviously have not. Hmm. Steve? I don't have any particular comment at this uh, point. Oh, okay. Your, your frame lit up for some reason, okay. like a rustle or something. Oh, somebody walked by. Oh, okay. So, Mike, I'll, I'll turn this back to you then. Uh, I don't know what you want from me. I was just looking for comments from the 
uh, thing. I know in, the, in your agenda, you, you were suggesting a vote. I don't know if people are voting or one. It sounded like uh, some folks wanted to look at this and come July, decide whether they want to uh, step up and uh, take responsibility for any parts of this. If, if so, then we could go forth with it. If not, then we drop it. Well, I'd like um, um, an informal sense of the um, of the television monitor. Um, you know, there's a general sense of approval for this. I sense this time. Am I reading you wrong? No, I, I'm all for it. I mean, I, I, all of my comments have been sort of editorial. I've got one more even. Uh, uh, Okay, why don't you throw that one in and then we'll come back to that question. Well, it's the one that's very specific to the senior center at the bottom of page uh, one, two, three. Um, and I would like to, that sentence, uh, which talks about the committee will also build on its existing monthly face-to-face -face utility bill information sessions. That's the reference to the stuff I do there at the Yarma Senior Center by adding the following topics. I would like to get uh, a sense of more of an engagement, not just at the se Senior Center, but their engagement in the effort as well to do these things. Because Lisa, uh, the uh, outreach person there who does all the program planning, uh, is constantly asking me, for instance, when we're, when we're going to get our shit together on the Solarize uh, stuff, because she's got long lead times, uh, and she wants the senior center very much to be participating in, in the Solarize uh, thing. So she has long lead times, lead times on what? Space? Uh, newsletters. The newsletters. And 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 uh, as a consequence, uh, use of the spaces, uh, you know, reserving something. Uh, I mean, it can be done. Uh, an activity can be planned without the same advance notice, but it won't be. She won't be able to give it the same level of publicity because one of her main ways of advertising an activity is through the through the newsletter i mean it's a it's its primary function is as a as a calendar well okay well, uh, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up about that because uh you know i proposed that then you you meet what one tuesday a month or something is that no what no i'm there every week uh, well i haven't every been week. there since since uh, February, but uh, all right. I was under the assumption that you did this once a month, say like on the first Tuesday of the month, and I was going to say, okay, can we take them the second, third, and fourth Tuesdays and uh, assign each well, one of the I, days one of these topics? You know, I'm not usually very busy. I mean, we if we had structured activities, uh, I would be just as happy as a of having, you know, structured activities uh, for these things. Uh, I mean, I just sit there and hope somebody will come in the door um, uh, uh, is the way we've been doing it. And quite frankly, there, there, there are weeks on end when nobody comes in the door. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it certainly, I, I certainly get a lot of psychic income out of people coming in and and my helping them, but the advantage of it otherwise for me is that I have some quiet time without being bothered to to do other things. <laughs> well, I have a question for you, Bob, um, concerning you know energy committee and the senior center, but also you know very practically in the next year and a half for for Solarize. Would there be any possibility, given that that a new center director is, you know, kind of feeling her way and, you know, probably not going to make any structural changes, 
would there be a way, given that uh, Lisa Notary is um, so enthusiastic about this, to get um, a sort of overlay title for her as Senior Center Energy Liaison or something like that that would give her a little bit more um, authority to help um, figure out what might be useful without having to check back every time she makes a contact? Uh, you know, we get into the personality dynamics of the senior center, which are always fraught with uh, adventure, uh, uh, I have found. Uh, and uh, so I, I would have to talk that one over with Lisa. Uh, at the, at the very least, uh, uh, I, I think she wants to sort of stay in the background, but make sure everything operates smoothly. Is is uh, I don't think she wants to raise her head too much. Uh, so, uh, Robert, we wanted to get on a newsletter that said we were expanding your program in September. When would she have to find out about it? Needs, it's about two months. Two months ahead of time. Yeah. All right. Uh, Barry so we've, said, we, we've got to start figuring out now what we might want to be doing in, uh, in September and October. And then uh, for, for November and December, we could probably have that uh, done somewhere in August sometime. It's a newsletter. That? Joyce, we have a meeting in July. I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Let's, uh, let's uh, make a final decision at the July meeting as to whether we're going forth with it, uh, this or not. And if we are going forth, then uh, Bob can alert uh, Lisa that uh, we want to be put into the newsletter for either September or October, whichever one. Oh, okay. Now, are you talking about Solarize or, or what we're doing? Well, as far as I'm concerned, they can overlap. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and I just, you know, we're, we're, this is running pretty long, but I just want to make, Barry just sent out an email about, he, he found some good information on electric vehicle. If you just want to tell us a little bit about that, especially Tara will know about it. And we've got a number of different pieces that are going to start building that database already. I, I, I just started um, surfing to see what was, online and the the state electric vehicle rebate program does break down the rebates they've issued by zip code um right. and there, there it looks like there have been a total of 17 rebates in yarmouth since 2011 when the program began um which strikes me as, as probably less than the total number of vehicles not everybody applies for a rebate the rebate program only started in 2014 it, interrupted its coverage for some models and you know but based on Mike's premise of well we're about you know three tenths of a percent of the state's population and there's supposed to have been 22,000 EVs sold in Massachusetts through last summer we should have about 70 electric vehicles in, in the town if we're typical um, in any event I, I, so I don't think that that one source is the whole picture. No, it's another piece of the puzzle, so. Yeah. And, and, and I, I did ahead. want to throw out that, you know, in terms of making, worrying about whether we're going to cover all of these tasks, most of them are about outreach and are things that, to make Solarize work, we're probably going to be doing in some form anyway. I mean, the... the yes. The, right. You know, that... The, the, as I've been thinking about it, and the message in Solarize is partly you should do this because it'll save you money, but you ought to do it because it saves the world. And educating the town about climate and why this, why solar is good as well as profitable is a, you know, it's a dual message and different people will respond to different pieces of that. But, you know, getting more than just a handful of folks to, to put solar power on they're going to have some some motive more than just that it'll be a, some savings on their electric bill. 
Well, if a pandemic doesn't make them think long-term survival of the species, then, then I don't know what will. So are there any other comments on this? Are we generally approving of this with like, as, as Bob was saying, you know, editorial things here and there, but um, does this look like a good route forward to everyone? Yes, it does to me. Yeah. Yeah, to me too, I've got some edits and ideas to, that I'm writing down, so I'll send them to Mike. Okay. And I certainly think it it looks good. Shall we make a vote of approval um, with the idea that there'll be some um, some final edits, but that the it seems as if the approval for moving forward with this um, is unanimous. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, Sandy, I haven't heard from you on that. Sandy? Okay, not sure what happened. Sometimes people's screens get their little yellow light around them, but I think it's a background noise. Um, Sandy is the only person who hasn't weighed in on this, but I I believe that she's Can enthusiastic. No, yes, no. yes, we weren't sure what happened. No. Um, we went out for a I, beer. I know, really. Um, I'm trying to get, I got another Zoom meeting at six o'clock, so I'm trying to, do both and trying to unmute, et cetera. Oh, so okay. I'm all for it. I had said it. I'm sorry you didn't hear it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, can I have a motion then of general approval of um, Mike's proposal um, in its latest yeah. edition and uh, um, a big vote of thanks to Mike and with the, the understanding that we will have like little edits here and there for the final version, which we can, we can um, uh, bring up at our next meeting. What I, would, what I would put in as a motion is that we um, in general approve. So I want a motion that we, we in general are grateful and thrilled with this um, document and uh, approve it with the idea that it needs to have um, names attached to tasks in order for a task to continue on the list. And there might be additional edits by the people who are taking the lead. Ah, so we wouldn't get to like pass this and then assume that future members of energy committee would have to implement it. We'd have to, we'd have to stand by our decision. I don't know what that means. Sure. <laughs> that just means that like the names have earlier, to go on now. <laughs> and just so I, I might be maybe maybe this will get voted down, but just that's what I would. I thought that's what Mike had had agreed when I suggested okay. before that he was okay. just listing okay. possible tasks and that we were saying we need to somebody needs to choose them and list them because otherwise we're signing up for things that will never happen. And I am not interested in. So I can abstain, but I'm not interested in approving a proposal that won't happen. I think we can defer the final approval until the next energy committee meeting, at which time people will have had time to go through it and decide which pieces of it they want to sign up for. Yeah. yeah. Even, uh, my suggestion would be even uh, we might have an attachment to this dated and say these are the persons who uh, uh, are assuming responsibility uh, for a particular action at this point in time. That would be a kind of a living document. Uh, it wouldn't change the, uh, uh, the basic document, but it would provide assignments. It would uh, uh, mm. memorialize who, who was assigned to what. All right, I will create a table that will do that. Yeah. 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 lead and support for any that uh, require more than one person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that solves all issues with that then. And so the thought then is to do a general approval this time 
or to do the approval next time? I'm not sure I'm sensing where the majority is here. I think I, you could say we, the, the, the committee approved the dr draft with editorial changes to be implemented by the next uh, committee meeting and um, assignments made for individual tasks. Okay. Yep. Can yeah, I have uh, a motion to that effect? I'll, I'll make a motion to that effect. Oh, thanks, Steve. I can second it. Okay. One thing, Joyce, when after the next meeting, if this gets all approved, does this get forwarded to the Board of Selectmen or something? Do you have to do that? You know, it's well, amazing how little we, we have actually to have the... to do. <laughs> but, but, but yes, I, I would think that we should. Bob was going to ask, don't you have to post it or something? Uh, no, no. I, what I was going to say is that I think the separation uh, between your document here and the the assignment aspect of it would be what this would replace sort of our mission statement or, or whatever on the uh, on the website on the website, and that the task list would be a working document of the committee kept um, within yes yeah. yeah good point okay well we're about to lose sandy sandy are, are we being because i know you've got your other meeting but are we being um hosted out of town hall still when you leave us i think we are but I just want to check on no, that. Tom is still on. He's still no. on there. Tom is still on. Okay. Thank you, Tom. So glad we haven't driven you away. No, nope, not at all. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, then we move to the um, Tom Berry isn't here and the selectman meeting is starting. So he'll be checked in on that. Um, update on YCAN, the Yarmouth Climate Action Network, and what they've been up to this month. Uh, well, I'll be quick because I know it's getting late. Um, the main thing I wanted to uh, flag is that, um, you know, the, the climate emergency declaration is deferred until whenever there's a town meeting in the fall. Um, but in between now and then, um, Dan Knatnik had, had, when we talked to him about it, suggested that, on, originally on the assumption that the emergency would be declared this spring, that we work together with him towards the fall in developing a more concrete bylaw. And the most specific thing I understood that, that he was thinking about was um, a requirement that future requests for proposals for town projects um, require an evaluation of a net zero design alternative. Um, and um, so we suggested to him that we hope to work uh, together with the town administration to figure out the details of that to offer a town meeting in the fall. Um, but I'm hoping that the energy committee will take that on as a um, additional project to, because I suspect that the town administration is going to be extremely distracted still for several months to come with the, the crisis. Mm -hmm. um, and I propose to circulate a draft that I'm starting to play with about what what exactly we're talking about when uh, we're creating that requirement for future projects so that we can maybe do some of the groundwork for Dan and um, not wait until he can free up time to pay attention but he can just respond to something and run it by town lawyers um, and I will circulate something between now and the next meeting and would uh, ask maybe that, that that be on the energy committee agenda for July to um, ponder what a new bylaw um, on energy efficient town construction would look like. Okay, I'll give myself a note to put that on the July agenda. And if you could maybe send me the wording that seems best. Sure. I'll include that. Okay. Um, Susan, do you want to add anything on that or anything from um, the Faith Network? Yeah, if Tara has any information about Dan's availability, because my assumption with this so far has been 
we are really dependent on his energy level. I think it's going to be fantastic for Barry, Barry to shoot us up um, some groundwork and for us to do that. But, but originally, Dan was saying that he hoped to gather all the procurement um, managers across the Cape and to have them jointly um, offer input on a bylaw. So it would be something we could do for, for Yarmouth, but also it could be done by any town that was doing a resolution. They could add a second bylaw. But it depends on his energy. So I don't know if, if Tara's uh, got any update on that, or we can talk about it next month. Okay, I don't have any updates on um, Dan's time frame, other than I know he's totally out straight, as I'm sure you can all imagine. So as far, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he's made any progress with that. I don't know if um, there's been the outreach and see that would have been something also that would have fallen under Rich um, and Rich is no longer with us. Rich was our procurement officer. Um, so we do still have, I don't know if any of you have met her, Svetlana, who is well, oh, yes. And she's very, very good, um, very knowledgeable. But I, I can certainly, I can check with Svetlana. I work very, very well with her on numerous things. Um, and I will certainly check with her and see if that's something she has any knowledge of. Because if anybody does other than Dan, it would be Svetlana or, you know, or Rich, who's no longer with us. But uh, yeah, I, I, I will add that to my list. And then um, one other thing I just wanted to mention, I'll try to do this quickly regarding the senior center um, publishing anything within the senior center it is Bob was correct it's a basically a two month um, two months ahead of time is when they would need the information and I, I was trying to access the guidelines uh, while I took myself off here I've got two laptops going and I'm having connection issues with this server so and I'm afraid if I try to do this lap I need all of you so I, I haven't been able to access the actual form, but the senior center, they have a form. Um, Bob, I don't know if that's something you're familiar with as well. And it, it's a guideline basically on how long it can be. And the words have, it has to be X amount of words that can go in as far as your ad goes. We don't have the, you know, for our purposes assessing, we used to do the seniors, the, the workshops. So we, you know, we, we were able to get a, quite a large blurb in there and it's a semi-annual I'm uh, sorry a seven monthly news so I would be happy to um, receive a draft and take a look at it and 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 make some edits um, because it's probably going to have to be cut back um, versus what we want to say and what we actually can can have published because it's based on, you know, words. They may or may not. We may have some leeway to go, you know, a few words over, but I, I don't know how much. And uh, so that's something I've worked with Lisa on as well. Uh, I, we just submitted a couple of months ago to get in for, for the, I think it's the, it's either, I think it's the July, August uh, newsletter. So, I mean, I'd be happy to do that. Um, and if you, if you send me a draft, I would have to consolidate and then send it all out to you to see if that's going to work because of the wording or the other thing I can do is I can send out to all of you the what the actual guidelines are I said I'm just not I'm not able to access that right this second so sure something to keep in mind well the problem is, is we don't know exactly what we want right. to use it for yet uh, and uh, I Lisa's got a call into me right now, and I've been avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, uh, but because she's, I think she's coming up to another deadline uh, shortly. Uh, I haven't. Well, my relationship with the Lisa is very informal. I mean, we're friends as well as. Uh, I used to play cards with her mother, and oh. uh, okay. so um, 
I, I don't do anything. Uh, I, I go to Lisa and I say, yeah, well, let's do this. And, and she does it all. You know? I, okay. so, so that's been my relationship with, with Lisa. I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a, a charmed one because, uh, as I say, she, she, she's so pro-energy that yeah. uh, she, she'll, I just have to say, blah, 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 and it gets done, uh, you, you know, as, okay. as, as, as far as the center, the senior center is concerned. But she does have these paths that she, uh, and, and traps that she has to avoid within, mm -hmm. the, within the senior center itself, uh, that uh, I, I leave her to, uh, to deal with. I don't get involved with them. Uh, so. Well, Bob, why don't you think, you know, for the future, what kind of office hours and topics would work for you? But also, why don't you come in with some ideas in July about what kind of event you would think might work at the Senior Center that would be something that would be, oh, part energy committee, part solarize? Okay. Uh, I know we had a recent one of the problems uh, with that is we don't yet have guidelines if we're going to have an event there. We don't have COVID nineteen guidelines. Uh, oh right. Uh, and and that's sort of been one of the reasons why we haven't come up with anything. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so we'll think about that some more, but I do take your point, like the in, the in-person thing, like the one this past winter from the compact is, uh, it, it's a no-go right now. Yeah, exactly. And see, that's something that Lisa did in, directly with the compact. But it's the kind of thing that we, are proposing to do in 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 this document. Yeah, but the compact, remember, isn't. I, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this. It's not all things energy, so we wouldn't want to limit ourselves to compact things. No, and 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 uh, you know, I, I that last one, which was led by the compact. Uh, uh, I knew about it, and I and I, you know, I became. Uh, the tail end of of the pr presentation when the, when I presented Solarize, but in a very informal way because we had didn't have we only had informal approval at that point and and really oh that's right we weren't allowed to tell people yes exactly <laughs> but I spent fifteen. fifteen minutes telling people about something which we didn't know was going to happen. Hmm. Well, let's try to end on a note of like what we can do rather than yeah, exactly. what we can. Um, anybody have energy items that they want to bring up, individual items? And this includes people who are members, people who are non-members, anything? And if there isn't, can I ask Tara, we didn't want to put you on the spot about town energy use or anything like that, but can you pick one happy thing to tell us about the town and energy right now? And that'll be our, our, <laughs> our leaving in, in, you know, in a good mood. How's that energy park? You've got your mood on. They take your mute off, Tara. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the energy park is still going. Um, I have not there. There was a delay as far as the anaerobic digestion coming in, and it, it actually is unfortunate. There are so many, like with the water projects and the school projects, and. We were all, we were just po we were at such a good point, and then COVID nineteen happened, and it just really put so many things on hold that we had worked so hard to achieve, and we're just kind of 
stuck, not just with energy, but, you know, like I said, school, water, you know, water, um, sewer. Um, so one small thing is more people are turning their monitors off at night. That's the good news. But the bad news is, is that more computers are actually on because people have to remote in. So. Oh. <laughs> but the monitors are all getting turned off. <laughs> that was a big thing. That was a, you, you, you can't walk through an office at night and, and see where you're going anymore. You actually would have to turn a light on to do that. The monitors aren't, aren't all on. So um, that is one, one good thing. Well, that, that makes us feel that we're, <laughs> you know, we're, we're all together in a successful fight. Look at that. No blue light out of the, out of the windows in town hall. Right. Well, thank you all for attending this. It's been a long meeting, but it was great to see you even virtually. Do we have any motion we want to make? To adjourn. Yes. A second? Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Um, I guess that's unanimous. A big thank you to Mike and a big thank you to Tara and see you all July 7th. Okay. Very good. See you then. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Joyce. Have a good night. You as well. Bye-bye now. I hope that it is, but and if it is, then I hope